So this is a molecular orbital theory, and uh, uh, I am going to show you the video in the YouTube after this, and this is related to this statement. So looking at that, boron and nitrogen are forming a molecule with formula BN. So what is atomic number of boron? Do you know what's the atomic number? One, helium is two, lithium is three, beryllium is four, boron is five, okay? This is ZN5. You don't have to remember this. You can just look it up and where it is, those molecules, the atoms are, and this is a seven. But the number matters to me more is the this is the three valence electrons, five electrons available for the bonding. So that's a, a valence electron. So, okay, Bn. So Bn means uh, three plus five electrons. So I have, uh, so this five electron from the S2, S2, P. This is a 2s2p, this is a 2, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. Anyway, it's a 8 electrons. So people draw this, and in the, any exams, they have to provide this energy diagram to you. And what this energy diagram means, this is a energy from lower to the upper, so going up to the higher energies. And this one shows these two sides, this is the way that they, they show. So on both sides is the one that atomic levels. Okay? Atomic level, S orbital, P orbital. And you are going to bring the S orbital together. And what you see here is a, there is a, this is a good, good thing to, to see. An S and S orbitals are bring it together. There is a one that has a lower energy. There is a one that a high energy. It's almost like a forming, and the, the basic statement is no energy can be created or destroyed. So if you bring those two electrons with this energy, you are forming a energy state that is lower. So as a consequence, you need to form the higher energy orbital in the other side. It's more like a, you know, this, is a, this is a dark side and this is a bright side, I guess. Okay. So that's how they kind of split, split that up. And then this one here is uh, they form this pi bonding. So is a uh, I'll make this one bigger. Okay. So if I bring this, we are forming this two, and this is a sigma star and sigma. Right? That's a bonding and anti-bonding. And in this case, we are having pi first and the sigma. Once you ha have that, and the pi star, and the sigma star. So number of bonding and anti-bonding orbitals should cancel out, and there's nothing should be done. And this is a sort of a little awkward, okay? This one understandable. This one is not so symmetric, and the reason is because the, this is a sort of a smaller Z number atoms, and then the distance between S and the P orbital is not so big. So there's a lot, actually a lot of secondary interaction with your S orbitals. So you, this sequence is flipped. If you're looking at this, uh, maybe this one looks a, li a little bit more uh, geometrically symmetric. Okay. Think about it. this. So there are cases where, uh, and, and I have a separate slide for that, but you, you will notice um, that this is a, there are two cases, and the, the problem was given to you that we have this energy sequence this way. And then I am going to put, uh, show the, okay, so the, this one, boron, one, two, three electron to begin with, and this one is one, two, three, four, five. So you have those thing in the beginning, or well, what matters here is the most is, the one in the, in the middle, which is what we call M orbital. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I don't need to do the nine. Right? Okay. So I just stop here. So 
that's what I have done. So then what is a question now here is um, two questions. Uh, one is, is this molecule paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Do you, do you remember the, I told you about the, what is a diameter? Diameter means a circle, and you going through, draw the line going through the circle, right? So if you're looking at the circle and diameter is this, right? that means if you have the magnetic field, if you put this molecule, they're just going to go through it. There is no interaction. Just go through if you put in the two magnets. This molecule do not interact. Just go through it. Paramagnetic is something that's parallel. So if you put it in, they all kind of line up. It's like a small magnet here. Okay? And each electron is actually, when they are paired, they, are, they don't provide any paramagnetic property. If you see anything that unpaired electron, they will see the paramagnetic property. I don't see any unpaired electron in MO, so therefore, it is dynamic. Everything paired up, so it's a dynamic. And what is a bond order? Once again, bond order is half of well, let's count the one in the bonding orbital. One, those are the bonding orbital. So I see six electrons there. And how many electrons in anti-bonding? Two electrons. So therefore, you are seeing four. The bond order is two. Okay. So I think that I I kind of answered what what was what was being asked, and. So I want to go back, this is not commonly done, but this is a, let's say, okay, BN, bond order two, so that means there's a, like a two bond of in four, and I know I can, I have a eight electron to deal with, so let's do the nitrogen. How about the, let's just look at the nitrogen. Is nitrogen is okay for satisfied doctor rule? That's good, so it's a good Lewis structures. And how many electrons I have used so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have used uh, all the eight electrons. Uh, so that's, that's the electron. So what happened to this boron? Boron do not satisfy the octet rule, right? So this is a, something that we cannot really explain, but when you see this, have you seen the compound BF3? And have you seen that beryllium with two fluoride? These are the, another exception uh, to the rule of octet rule. So the one that really obeyed the octet rule is actually carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. There's no uh, mistake about that. But this boron is actually, if you draw the uh, Lewis structures, it looks like this. So this one is six electron feel like having it. And they are not uh, satisfying the octet rule, but this is a stable compound. So does a beryllium too. And this is even worse. This is a, the four electrons uh, and they are stable compounds. So the boron and the beryllium chemistry is actually different from what we normally know as organic chemistry, uh, octet rule kind of thing. So it's actually more complicated uh, chemistry. Okay, so I do have an extra note. And this is something that I wanted to put in a separate video.